Let's get into it and get down to it. Welcome to Figure It Out. It's George Grumbacher. Joining me always is Centauri Minor. Hello, folks. Helping us move from awareness to action today. Two of the most popular human <laughs> beings on Earth. I would also say the smartest. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. Smartest, influential, dangerous, all of these Honestly. things. So we're going to talk about Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson today. Um. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Sorry. I'm excited. And I think uh, there's, I've been thinking a lot about this and um, I think it's always, I think it's really important to think and be thoughtful about all these things. And once you start thinking about two uh, people like this, my brain just goes in a million different places. But yeah. what I wanted to start with is just talking about the circumstances that allowed for Andrew Tate to be the most Googled human being on earth Ooh. and Jordan Peterson to have risen to the level of prominence and success that he has risen to and, 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 and vitriol. It wasn't that long ago that we started talking about self-esteem. We didn't mm. always talk about self-esteem. It hasn't been that long that we've been talking about identity. And now all we talk about is identity and identity is so incredibly subjective that I can choose today to be whatever I want. Like literally yep. I could be whatever I want. And I don't, I, I have opinions on all these things, but I think as I look at why is, why are these two men who they are and, and how has this happened? Uh, I think that, uh, that, those are two of the really key reasons and the lack of traditional institutions and traditional values has created a vacuum where these two people have been able to sort of occupy so much space and attention and uh, oxygen and, and everything else. Yeah. I think what you just said about the lack of traditional values uh, and um, institutions, whatever that might mean, I think, what made them so popular, right, is that they created a place for people to be heard. And I know we always talk about not feeling heard, but they had pop parts of the population that felt like the world was getting away from them, whether right or wrong, um, but that they they provided a voice. And also they were like, oh, that I like them because that resonates with me. And I'm not hearing any one of the last few years that resonates with me. So I think for both of these guys, I mean, kudos to them for providing a, a space for folks to feel to feel heard and also feel like they have an identity somewhere, too. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting. Um, I think in a lot of the way, in in a lot of ways, they are are very 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 similar and also very mm. different. Yes, and um, I think that we have the the fast thinking part of our brain, and then the slow thinking part of our brain. And the fast thinking part of our brain is is Andrew Tate. Yeah, so that's like so this, good. This, that's a good way of putting it. This 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 guy's pretty cool. He's strong. He's powerful. He is very uh very sure in in his in his opinions and he speaks authoritatively but when i actually get into it a little bit i'm like okay but he's kind of a caricature and he's probably playing a character the slow part of my brain is jordan peterson so it's yep. the other side of that coin similar people doing what you've described sort of scratching that itch or feeling the need for people who are feeling like they don't have an anchor or somebody to look up to but Jordan is, uh, I mean, I think he's the real deal. I like Andrew Tate. I love Jordan Peterson. I gotcha. know you okay. think about that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have a, uh, a strong opinion on either of them other than I think Al, um, Andrew Tate, you 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 did a good job of like, I think he appeals to like a certain demographic in a certain like mindset. And so it's clear like how he became popular. Also, I do think to rise to that level, you have to be kind of, become a character of your caricature of yourself like some of the stuff he says it's just it's not it's, i know some people feel like it's super dangerous and some of the things he said has uh, not been great but like it's mostly like okay this is like 30 something year old dude he's kind of a douchebag he talks about this stuff and that's fun and people like it so um you know like Kudos to him for building that brand. The Jordan Peterson side is actually much more interesting because, I mean, this guy is an intellectual, right? Um, he has the pedigree, he has the the experience, he has the mindset. And so it's far more interesting to think about um, kind of the impact that he can have through his, through the lens of like, he he actually has some gravity behind his words, whereas Andrew Tate, I don't, you know, you take it or leave it. It's like, what, what does it matter? 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that there's a lot of substance there yeah. for Andrew Tate. I've not done a deep dive into his Hustlers University, um, but just based on the title, I don't think any of us really need to. I, I have I have paid attention to people who have dug into it, and it's I, I feel like it's 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 not super strong, nor is it super valuable. But he is sort of the People Magazine, whereas Jordan Peterson is, you know, the Encyclopedia, for lack of a better sort of contrast there. Love that. Um, I think that. Andrew Tate is um, is going to be fleeting more so. He he very well may end up in Romanian prison or wherever he is. I don't have any comment on that because we don't know yeah. what's really going on there. So I don't think that there's a lot of fruit or a, a lot of future there. But I think that Jordan Peterson is is a legitimate, uh, in a lot of ways, a, a hero that should be appreciated. Uh, now, you may not like him because you disagree with the positions he takes, but to revisit why it is that we know who he is, I think is really, really important. Mm. And that's in 2016, Canada was was uh, putting forth, um, I wrote down the actual bill itself, but I'm not going to be able to find it now. Um, it was like B-16 or something like that. And at that time, Jordan had already been a black practicing clinic. He's, he's, I think Jordan is pretty close to 60, if not in his 60s. He's probably in his 60s, but he had been a practicing clinical psychologist. He'd been a professor a at Harvard. He'd been a professor at University of Toronto. And I do think that he is a legitimate genius from an IQ mm -hmm. standpoint. But he, during that time, the whole thing was, we're going to compel your speech. And if you do not call me by my desired pronoun, you will get in trouble legally. And he said, wow. bullshit. There's no way you will not compel me. You will not compel my speech. And he's like, this is the hill I'm going to die on. And there is where, where he rose to prominence. There's a YouTube video in 16, really his first one with him debating college students, like just out in the... Um, out on 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 the uh the the college square or whatever and that was really what kind of launched him into the in, in, into the public sphere at, at, at enormous risk because he essentially lost his job over doing yeah. that um and now today they're still going after him i don't know if you're aware but they're trying to oh, take yeah. his license from him i've read about uh the idea of um Sort of like if you don't do this continuing education piece or whatever it might be, you will lose your license, which is un you know it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's reeducation is is actually social media. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, I think isn't that like a social media reeducation? Which, I mean, I mean, we could have a whole conversation about how these guilds and associations have their uh, have their hands tied around any given professional. So that's neither here nor there. Um, but I do think um, for him, as with all, and we've talked about this before, kind of assessing the risk from um, your standpoint as a professional, like what you're willing to do and do and not do. And he's, he's um, gone in head first saying like, if these may be the consequences, but I have to tell the story that I have to tell. And that that's, that's, that's for his, that's for him to die on. And I've been spending a good amount of time thinking about, about honor mm. and, living honorably and having a code and living by it. Um, and I really think that that is one of the attractive things about, about Jordan Peterson is that he is very pragmatic. I think that what he talks about is, is pretty common sense. Uh, but in a world where there's not a lot of pragmatism and not a lot of common sense yeah. and lots of name calling and lots of coercion and lots of saying stuff like toxic masculinity and, and white privilege and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, we have a lot of people who are just trying to live their life, man. Woman. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, and what he talks about resonates because he is putting his, his, his career on the line to do the work that he believes to be accurate and important. And it's certainly resonating. Yeah. I think um, if anything, uh, everyone should have appreciation of how he does to your point at the beginning of the show. Um, 
kind of slow down the conversation and just make people think about it. So whether you agree or disagree, it actually, I appreciate the kind of facilitated, um, forceful facilitation of like, let's talk this out. We may not agree about on it, but like, I want to have some really good dialogue debate, uh, which is, it's, it's been lost uh, in this day and age. And so um, I can appreciate him for that. I, I will say, I always think it's interesting. Um, Kanye West would might be a good person that falls into this, but like we talk about honor and people doing what they want, but there is a sort of like a little bit of privilege in that and that Jordan Peterson, he's going to be like, he can say whatever he want and he's probably, he'll, he'll be fine. Like he'll figure out a, a base to like always make money. He may not be a psychologist, but he'll be able to go on like radio shows. And I think the interesting piece of all of these kind of folks, these firebrands is like everyday people can't do that, which like, I'm sure there are people, everyday people that are like, I would love to be able to say that and do that, but I just can't, which is in, unfortunate in and of itself. Right. Which is kind of what he's debating is like, I should be, people should be able to do what they want to do or say what they want to say. Not dangerously, without consequences, but like there are consequences to um, to those actions and some some consequences that we uh, others, depending on who you are. Yeah, well, that's certainly true. That's certainly true. I think that what he talks about is is positioning yourself for success in whatever endeavor that you choose. And that if you if you master your fundamentals, and if you have yourself together and you're responsible and you're doing everything you need to, then it positions you to be able to, if you're financially successful or stable rather, mm -hmm. then you can speak your mind and be a little bit more independent yep, versus yep, yep, yep. if you are not, then you, you are can't. stuck. You're, 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 you're <laughs> yeah. stuck in your dead end job that you hate because you're not moving forward. If you're not thinking your own thoughts, well, then... You're just being sort of led around by whatever you're listening to and whatever you're paying attention to instead of doing your own thinking. Um, so are there any uh, particular, uh, especially for Jordan Peterson, any kind of controversies or hot takes that you think went too far? Like anything that he said, you're like people over blew that. I'm just curious. Yeah, um, I think the one that comes to mind is uh, he talked about he said enforced monogamy at one point, something like that. Was. Okay, And thing about Jordan is that Dr. Peterson, I kind of feel silly calling him by his first name. Thing about Jordan Peterson is that he lets it rip, man. He yeah. will go in. I think that he and Russell Brand are two of my favorite uh, public intellectuals because they will go and you can actually, and, and, and they're not afraid to actually talk through something on camera or, or being recorded. And it's a sign of a smart person, but also that's also a very courageous thing that's to be able to sort of talk about an idea and actually pause and be thinking through it. Um, so you can actually see him formulating opinions or working through problems live. Um, and when you do that, and now he's been, he's been doing that forever but yeah. since 2016 now. So coming on, uh, you know, seven, six, seven years, there's going to be things you're going to say, which if somebody wants to grab it and and shove it back in your face, that's going to be pretty easy. Right. And I think it would out to that to that point. Um, and you did a good job of just kind of talking through what it would look like to talk things through on camera. So think of like anything that you do in like your business or your personal life. If you got like 24 hours a day of just you asking me a question, me being like, I think this, I think this, I'm thinking out loud. I might not be married to that idea, but like, let me work through it. And then you got a piece of that. Yes, that would cause a lot of, a lot of problems. I'm thinking through like some of the stuff I've gone through this week and like have thought out loud or tried to get through and people would be like, that's not great, but out of context. So that's, yeah, that's, that would be pretty hard to do. And to your point, very courageous because I don't think I would be able to do it. And that's what we want, right? It's really one of the points of the whole show here that we're doing, right? Is that. And one of the through lines to all of it is we need to be able to have space where we can make mistakes and we can, you know, kick ideas around and let stupid ones die and build on good ones. Uh, and that's part of the problem with what's going on, particularly with our politicians is, you know, we had, you know, whatever. Biden didn't even campaign. Katie Hobbs here in Arizona didn't even didn't campaign or she didn't debate. That's didn't that debate, to me yep. is that's preposterous. Like, shame on you. This is about your ideas. It's not about your political affiliation because it said Democrat. That's the only reason that 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 people voted for her 
because they certainly didn't know what she thought about things because she didn't debate. She didn't debate. That's fair. Yeah, there was a lot of controversy <laughs> and like a lot of folks who, me being one of them, it's like, you know, you have to, it's part of the democratic process, right? You have to kind of go up there and kind of say what you, uh, what you believe, what you desire, what you want for the state, the country, whatever it might be, and let, give people the opportunity to learn more about you. Um, so I think at, for to that particular point, I think that was, um, she kind of left people out of the demo, uh, democratic process there. Yeah. Are you able to string some thoughts together live on stage or are you just, are you just Do a it. parrot? <laughs> yeah. Right. Talking points. And that's, that's it's, way too many people. Is there, um, if you had the opportunity to, uh, to meet with Dr. Peterson, like what, what, like what topics or issues do you think would be fun to kind of either debate or unpack with him? I don't even know. Honestly, I've thought about like, that. Like, yeah, I, I, had, I was thinking about that today. I was like, Oh, I don't know. If I had the opportunity to have a conversation or have him on a podcast or something like that, what would you ask? Um, and I don't, I don't have a good answer to that question. Um, because I am nowhere close to his, this is not going to yeah. shock anyone. <laughs> It'd be a very intimidating conversation. I'm nowhere close to his intellectual, uh, <laughs> you know, um, whatever equal. Um, but I think it's, I think that that's a really interesting thing for sure. Just to go back to the politics briefly. Mm. Um, you watched the speaker of the house. It went like what they, they voted 50 times and Kevin McCarthy, um, he finally won on the 51st yeah, or course, like great. 17th or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my initial response was what a waste of money. And I actually went hmm. through and I'm like, okay, they make, you know, $250,000 a year, each of them, there's 400 of them. So this is costing us like a hundred thousand dollars a day or something like that to watch these, to watch these yahoos do nothing. But I changed my mind. I'm like, this is actually the democratic process. At the democratic work process, right here. yeah. They're making sausage right now, and it's not ugly. It's not pretty, and it's not supposed to be. We're supposed to actually be able to fight about these things or have robust debate, and then come to some kind of a consensus and come and make um, concessions to one another. That's what politics is. It's not my way or the highway. And um, so I think that it was a. Probably a triumph more so than it was a failure. Yeah, I, I'm glad you called it out because I I was always on that camp of like this is what like this is what the this is what you're supposed to do right. There's debate. There's people being upset. There's people going back and forth and conceding and uh, compromising, and that's the way it should be. Um, I think it was 15 rounds it went, and rightfully so. Like we, the process worked, and the ultimately I think people can not feel good about. It, well, however you feel about the outcomes, however you feel about the outcome, but feel good about the process. Like we got here, we arrived here because of that process, which I think is, it was a great thing for the American people to see because it hadn't happened in a hundred years. And it's like, oh, it works. This process works, which is good. Yeah. I don't even know. Uh, thank God for, I was going to say a Republican, but there's, there's no Republicans. I think that I would say thank God for, <laughs> and I'm certainly not going to say thank God for Democrats. So because, here we are. Because, yeah. Because, like South Park said, Centauri, it always comes down to a giant douchebag versus a turd sandwich. So, <laughs> and boy, were they correct. Surpri surprise, surprise, surprise. George, I'm, I'm, I'm curious for uh, just going back to Andrew Tate for a moment. I, I, obviously his, um, his brand has been really, um, really adopted or attracted by uh sort of young men who um who probably feel disenfranchised by the overall rhetoric around what it means to be a man so uh what do you think is kind of the the future of that population that demographic is it more of andrew tates is it more of getting back to some sort of normalcy and the pendulum swinging like what what do you think happens to young men yeah i think i think it all makes sense and i'm 44 mm -hmm. and i Andrew Tate has that it factor when I watch him and I look at him, he's interesting and he's attractive. Um, and Jordan Peterson is sort of the opposite. He's, he's an old guy. He's sort of frail. He has a squeaky voice and he's Canadian, and, you know, God bless Canada and all that stuff. But if I were 20 years old, when I saw Andrew Tate, what would I have thought? And that was a different season of my life where I wanted to look flashy and be hot for lack of a better term and, you know, drive nice cars and be attractive to, to women and all that. And, and to make money and to be rich at 30, that would have been less so. And certainly at 40, 
You know, I, I just, right. I, I, I've, I appreciate him for, for what he is, but it's not a draw to me anymore, but I would have, um, you know, we're playing armchair quarterback at this point, but, um, again, I think that it's, he is somebody that can have start sort of a, an internal dialogue with, with a young person, man or woman say, okay, this is interesting. You know, am I trapped in the matrix? Like Andrew Tate talks about, am I interested in, in just going down the traditional path or am I interested in pursuing entrepreneurship and sort of making my own path? Um, and I think if you take that away from it, that's nothing but a positive thing. And then hopefully that leads you to that other side of the coin with, with a deeper thinker, like, like Jordan Peterson or, or, or anybody else, or, or reading the Bible or reading the Quran. That's interesting that Andrew Tate just converted to Islam. I don't know if you knew I that did or see not. That. I did see that. Yes. But that is, that's sort of my thought process is I think at the end of the day is, is it a, a net is, are, 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 are these people of value? Mm. And I think that they are, I think that they are of value. If anything, just to kind of, uh, as they, kind of are built to do shake up the system and uh, make people think a different way. I think that's always valuable. You may not agree with it, but again, yeah. What do you think? Um, as it relates to the kind of that conversation about young men. Yeah. Uh, I, I, similar to you. I think I definitely see the attraction and appeal. Like if you're a guy in America and you've been told like, you're an asshole for being a guy in America. Like, of course you're going to be attracted to someone who's saying like, embrace this, embrace this potential, um, kind of embrace this lifestyle and base, embrace this approach. But I do th- also agree with you that as you, as those folks get older, they'll just naturally have different priorities in life. And so that will just kind of wane and go away. I'm more so curious about if those, those folks who, who never kind of outgrow it, what that means for them, um, what that means for society because there are there are a group of guys who just it seems like there's been a failure to launch and we've kind of failed young men which is why i was asking that asking that question yeah that's fair but you know part of me says isn't that always the case there's yeah. there's Every plenty of, says, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's there's bars all across america centauri with a bunch of fucking douchebag dudes that peaked in high school so that's fair yeah it never <laughs> goes away <laughs> every you know? generation has them that's fair but I, it, I, I have always rejected category. I, I reject people trying to trying to label me, you know. And I don't. I just think that that's. I don't, you know. And so I don't think that I'm. I don't think I'm. 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 I'm unique there. I think that uh, there's a lot of people that feel that same way. And when all society seems to want to do these days is is label things and. And if I am contrary in my beliefs or my opinions to dismiss me, um, well, my impulse says go fuck yourself. So that's fair. That's I what a lot of people you. say. And <laughs> and Andrew Tate is kind of a big middle finger. And um, again, Jordan Peterson is a more thoughtful middle maybe, finger. Uh, what's a Canadian middle finger? Oh, I don't know. Is that asking really somebody to go that. fuck themselves? Or <laughs> telling somebody to go fuck themselves? Uh, putting a please behind it. Yeah, hey, buddy. <laughs> buddy pal <laughs> nice so there it is centauri minor is a member of hustlers university and a massive proponent of andrew tape you heard it here it, it's that like a i haven't looked into hustlers university is it like a set of courses that guys are supposed to take to what to like be, what what's the outcome of hustlers university yeah it's it teaches you how to be a hustler duh <laughs> I, I, I think it's I think it's designed to teach you how to uh, how to how to break free of a traditional nine to five job and find mm. different ways to earn money. So it, it's like teaching you how to how to do side hustles and potentially turn them into your um your 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 full time deal. So, okay, dig it. Nice, but I don't know. I don't really know. That's just me watching YouTube videos about uh, people dissecting it instead of actually going straight to the horse's mouth. So fair. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, we'd love to, uh, as always love to get to your feedback and your thoughts on this dear listener. So let us know what you think, uh, on social media, or you can send Centauri emails directly or call him on his cell phone, whatever you're into. <laughs> Anything else, sir? 
<laughs> no, I'm just imagining someone calling and saying, like, what are your thoughts on Jordan Peterson? <laughs> like, I don't what, where should we begin, sir? Uh, no, I, I love the conversation, love the dialogue. I know that uh, you and I were kind of going back and forth with like, what should we talk about? And the Andrew Tate stuff came up. And then I've always just been fascinated with how people um, how people think about the, the Jordan Peterson piece. I don't necessarily agree with all his views, but I definitely like that he brings um, kind of contrarian views to the forefront or also makes people think through things, which we can always appreciate and we always need more of. So I, was, I enjoyed the conversation. Amen. Excellent. Well, share the show, subscribe, do all the things. And as always, keep questioning because the struggle is real. I love your radio voice. Thank you.